I would like to have a discussion around a particular point today. Okay, now if you're watching this on YouTube later, definitely be sure to like, subscribe, follow the channel, join us on Discord at discord.gg forward slash simorg or at asheshq.com, the home of this channel and the Ashes Pathfinders podcast, right? Another one of our Ashes talks, what we're calling Ashes Talk Blank. We're on five or six of them now. Really enjoying the, the series that we started because it allows us to just have some community oriented discussions uh, around different game mechanics and how they might relate to Ashes of Creation. Here is the point of discussion for today. So discussing guild features and guild functions and what do we consider best practices? What do we wanna see? What would be a mark or marker, if you will, that Ashes of Creation could miss if they didn't include it? Now, on the Pathfinder show, we discussed this. We've been discussing it a lot. One of mine is the calendar system and how you can utilize it for guild functions. That's an excellent one, right? There are a lot of features that over the years have been included for guilds in MMORPGs. So with that being said, like what are some of these features for guilds that you really want to see in Ashes of Creation? Now, previously we've actually discussed like guild wars, you know, uh, the guild fortresses and stuff like that. There are a lot of perks to uh, the guild system and a lot of it we're not going to get to see. Like we know that like smaller guilds versus larger guilds, the smaller guilds are going to have uh, these buffs to help them to kind of like balance out the difference between the small guilds and the large guilds. But speaking about some of these points, for me, guild reservations and a robust guild war and fort attack. Now, from what we've read so far about the Guild Wars and the, the, the whole system of conflict that, that that is organized, is it looks like a pretty well thought out system, but we haven't actually seen it. We haven't seen it working yet. Oh, that's a good one. I was waiting for somebody to bring that up. This, like Silverman says, Guild Hall. Vendarian says, a, a good ranking system. That one, that one as a guild leader is a big deal to me. It's important that you have enough flexibility in your guild ranking to organize your guild members for for at least a you know like a in a, a decent amount of roles like and for me a decent amount is like you want your gm officers right you want like maybe a veteran rank uh you want your normal member rank you maybe want like a raider rank an initiate rank and sometimes you want a homie been bad rank y'all know what i'm talking about you know Everybody, everybody's been in a guild where they had the homies and in, in, sitting in the corner rank position because they've been bad. No, just me. Ooh, TL says a permission system for using guild items. That one's super important. Lol, Venthorian says an East rank. <laughs> if we have that, we might call it that. Um, but to be determined. Uh, integrating is coming from Ravuda. Now, this is like, this is a really great idea. It's one we've talked about on the Pathfinder show before. I would like to see it. People are mixed. For those of you in the community, really want to know what you think on this one. Okay, so the integrating DKP points systems in the guild interface. I would personally like to see that, especially if we don't have, it would be great for guilds that utilize it. Sure, there are other resources, but I really appreciate being able to rely on in-game systems for everything and eliminate the add-ons. Yes, yes, I'm pro no add-ons. That's my jam. I mean, that's a great, I mean, the, this one too, though, from NoxCon, you know, not just the means of using guild items, but means of storing and accounting for said guild items. That's a great point. I have every intention of having a quartermaster in virtue. That's my guild. That's the, that's the community that I lead, right? And in our guild, that's the role that, that we've deemed as being important. There are other roles that are as well. And having access levels or even like, you know, I, I don't like messing with the guild bank. Can I do it? Yes. Sim's a little OCD. Sim, Sim might like to uh, completely, I don't know, dress right, dress everything, blame the army. I don't know. It's probably just me. Um, I don't want to have to worry about that. It would be really great to have privileges, you know, set to where like maybe only a specific person or basic specific roles have access to certain tabs. It's always been my jam. 
So you got the guild halls, right, being the focal point. We know we already talked about how like these are essentially like on the freehold plots and stuff like that. There was some talk back in the day. I know I'm referencing the Ashes Pathfinder show a lot. That's because we've had a lot of discussions there. It's a 5, 5 p.m. Sunday. Most people here probably know that already anyway. But my point is, is that we've had a lot of discussions over time around uh, the guild halls and like guild banks and, uh, you know, functions like maybe even having like boards, things of that nature. I, I've never enjoyed having to organize things for my guild. Like when the Elder Scrolls Online launched that one specifically, Okay, was like, it was tough, man. Like I ended up having to use a website to manage the events because I couldn't do it in game. And I would have really, I just, I felt like they missed the mark not having features like that. Not having, like their banking system is really strange in that game too. So pretty traditional guild bank system like World of Warcraft is a, I think is just a really well done one. Having tabs that you can unlock, you know, even having like setting a tax system if you have that to where you can set that and set that feature through your your bank tab having having different you know ranks able to access different things instead of it just being all or nothing like some games it's like you either have access to take x amount of items or you don't have access i like that kind of flexibility so those are really important i think i mean we could even talk about some of the best practices i mean you could talk about the emblem system, which we previously talked about before too. I mean, that kind of customization to show off your guild, that's sick. Being able to talk about like putting the emblems on, you know, maybe armor or ships or barding or things of that nature. Having the flag flying on top of your guild hall, flags out in front, something. Guild mark profession items. So, you know, it would actually be really cool. That's actually an interesting idea, Ronan. It would be really sick if like members of a certain level could be given access to remove certain types of like materials like assigning like this person can pull out these materials it's like it's super next level at least from my experience i've never seen anything that evolved but being able to be like okay we're dumping a bunch of oh my god guild message of the day for sure love that yeah guild info guild message of the day but the idea that ronan brought up about um mark profession items like that'd be really cool to have like your tailors able to pull out maybe even just specifically tailoring stuff, then having like a dump tab where people can dump in. And then like, you know, if you see something in there you need, instead of pulling out X amount of items, maybe you can just pull out X amount of specific types of items used for your profession. It's pretty cool. You wanna be able to set both rank in general and group. You could have a veteran raider and a veteran or an officer crafter. So yeah, like that would actually be cool. Or even like, you know, for some people who might specifically focus on trade. So in virtue, we actually are gonna have people who are going to specifically focus on maybe just trading. Like maybe they don't do a whole lot of other things. Maybe they just focus on trading. So there's not really a whole lot that they're going to be doing, but allowing them access to like maybe manage a particular tab as someone who's doing trading, they could, they could literally hoard all that there instead of having to use their personal bank and stuff. I mean, and they could have a role like, you know, trader or something like that. It might be a thing. It would be really nice to be like, you know, because we have a champion rank, which is like our veteran rank. And it'd be really cool to have like the champion rank. It'd be like champion, you know, and, and that could be like, you know, the different class leaders would be champion rogue, champion tank, right? I would love to be able to do that and to have that kind of flexibility, like to be able to actually categorize people in one, but giving them an additional descriptor, additional description, kind of like you do on like what we kind of do in Discord, which is I add the virtue tag. People have access to our guild channels. I add the rank. Now you've got an identifier for what their rank is in the guild. Now, if you added permissions, which you can do additional permissions for that role, they're se separate roles, but you kind of tie specific things to them. Have a guild mat storage that trades, uh, trade skillers can draw from while crafting on guild equipment. If there is any, I love that. People who sell their wares. Look, sometimes you go and you actually loot like BOEs in games, right? You toss those in a, in a panel and like you got your guild auctioneer and maybe they're the ones that just completely manage all the BOEs that are dropped in there, right? Dump it into the guild bank. What are some of those stuff and things that you would like to see within Ashes of Creation? What are the best practices as you have experienced them in an MMORPG, what do you think they shouldn't miss the mark on? What's the bread and butter, man? Let us know. Drop your comments. Leave us some love or come join us over in the Discord.